Hello and welcome to Money Life News and Views. I am Devashish Basu. Last fortnight, I said that people are so awed by the market behavior in 2020 after the shock of COVID that even with the benefit of hindsight, they are unable to find reasons which could explain what has driven the market relentlessly and to such great heights. The most common explanation for stock market, stock market movements and movement of individual stocks, of course, is earnings, earnings growth. As they say, stocks are slaves of earnings. Now, as long as earnings growth is assured, stocks would move higher. That's the assumption. If a company actually delivers much higher than expected earnings, the stock would jerk upwards in what is called an earnings surprise. Now, this was certainly not the case in late May when the market took off. Earnings were not only far from being assured, but they were decidedly, the outlook was decidedly gloomy. And anyone mentioning an earnings surprise would have been found to be mad. Now, it is worth noting all this now because we tend to forget our opinions. Our mind plays tricks with us. It's very common to find people looking back and rationalize the eventual outcomes of what has actually happened. You would very often, very often uh, see people saying, I knew it or it was only to be expected. No, it was not to be expected and nobody knew it. A number of people told me I missed a critical factor that has driven the market higher and that is lower cost of money and higher availability of money, which both together are, is called easy money more money at lower prices. Apparently, prices of risky assets rise under easy money conditions. It is the number one reason people think the US markets have gone up along with other risk assets. Now, the case for linking easy money to a bull market is this. The US Federal Reserve has kept interest rates artificially low, which means cost of money is low for a very long time and has also flooded the system with a lot of liquidity. This is, uh, you know, quantitative easing one, two, three, four, and so on, an operation twist, etc. These are different schemes to flood the market with liquidity. A cheap and ample liquidity would go where? None other than risk assets like gold, uh, uh, stocks, or cryptocurrencies. At least that is a theory. Now, this is a very widespread, widespread belief. It's almost an orthodoxy. The question is, is this also a post facto or a post hoc explanation to the bull market? After all, most of the orthodoxy in finance and economics is usually wrong, including theories that are part of widely taught finance curriculum. It turns out that a bit of digging will tell you that the correlation between easy money and higher stock prices is actually very weak. We need only to look at Japan, the oldest, the world's oldest lab for the easy money experiment is also Europe to know this. Bank of Japan has been trying to print money, which is high liquidity at low interest, to put Japan back on the path of growth for the past 25 years. It has tried nine fiscal stimulus packages starting with the first quantitative easing in as way back in 1997, but all that has failed to, to generate economic growth and fail to increase stock prices. Increase in, in fact, such massive liquidity, if the con conventional ideas are right, such massive liquidity should have created a property and a stock market boom. But defying conventional wisdom, asset prices remain weak. Convinced that the experiment will succeed someday, uh, the, the Bank of Japan has pushed interest rates into negative territory all from 2016 as another stage of monetary exper experimentation. Still no growth and no bull market in risk assets. Indeed, the continuous direct intervention of Bank of Japan in the bond market has, the, has made the market so unstable that the Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi, Japan's largest private bank, threatened to leave the bond market. Now, it may surprise you to know that Bank of Japan actually has a mandate to buy equity index funds or equity exchange traded funds. It is one of the rare central banks to have this mandate. And in fact, it has been buying stocks for years together. BOJ is among the top 10 shareholders 
in 90% of the stocks listed in the Nikkei 225. This is as direct a central bank's market intervention in stock markets as you can think of. But all that gush of cheap money did nothing. Nikkei keeps languishing and Japan is not alone. European Central Bank acted exactly the same way as the US Fed. But there too, no economic growth and no stock price rise. Central banks of Sweden, Switzerland, Denmark have all tried negative interest rates with no improvement in economic growth or a major stock boom. Clearly, conventional wisdom that markets rise if money is cheap and plentiful is not true. The US seems to be an exception and there are other reasons for it. And here is another surprising fact. In 2015, when the US began to shrink its balance sheet, the US equity market should have crashed. But after a few months, the market resumed its rally upwards right until September 2018. The fact is, markets didn't move up and down on a single factor, and that too one that everybody agrees on. Indeed, it is almost certain that if everyone believes a particular factor that is easy money is the reason stock prices go higher then such belief most certainly would turn out to be wrong it is in global markets that easy money theory had a chance to play out in full but even those markets cannot sustain the correlation between easy money and stocks now how far-fetched it is to link to the rise of such theory to the Indian markets there are far many too complex domestic and international factors that drive the market and these factors are ever changing that is why markets are now called complex emerging adaptive systems the factors are com complex country specific continually emerging and never static when a new set of factors come into play the market adapts to them but all this is too complex for our desires to make sense we want simple answers preferably a single answer of course I understand that it seems intuitively obvious that easy money would find its way into stocks, but evidence on the ground is absolutely thin. Thanks for watching.